you have a deep need to add value to other people's lives or to, to we call it sometimes build relationship. And then you have a deep need mm. to, to make an impact, to see that actually I'm doing some, some difference here. Um, and then for me, the question is on the right. So if, if I sort of this people, Everybody, welcome to the Workable Show. Uh, this is our podcast. We are a community of lifelong learners, and we are obsessed with building a meaningful career and doing work that matters to us. Uh, if that is you as well, then please subscribe to the show and go check us out at craftlearninglab.com and make use of all the resources that we have there or interact with us on social media. We are super easy to find all with myself, Maynard. For today, we are super privileged to have with us Dr. Johan Bierkes. Now, just to give you an idea um, about who Johan is and how we know each other, Johan is an executive coach to leaders and change makers in South Africa and abroad. He has worked with the top leadership in organizations like Remgro, Anglo American, APSA, Coca Cola, many more others that I'm not mentioning to you now, but most recently with the Springbok 17 and uh, as a mentor and guide, and that is super exciting. And we can hear a little bit about that. But at his current role at both Authentic Living Leading and as a leadership burnout coach, he focused specifically on how to perform at your highest without burning out or losing your spark. Um, Johan holds a PhD in the education and psychology department, a master's in leadership and honors in industrial psychology and MDiv in theology. And um, what he hasn't shared in his official bio, but I know that because um, <laughs> we've been friends for many years, is that Johan is also an ex Mrs. South Africa contestant. And maybe you can share a little bit about that. So congratulations <laughs> on all of those things, Johan. We are super glad to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Maynard. Yeah, my father is not as impressed with me. Uh, according to him, I, <laughs> I'm very confused. So that's why I did all these things. But uh, yeah, thank you for, for inviting me. I'm looking forward to chat with you. No, I think that's amazing. I think it's um, it's not often that that you get uh, individuals, high performing individuals, that are qualified, professionally qualified across various fields. And I mean that falls straight into our discussion topic for this morning. We can talk about that a lot. But um, uh, with much respect to your dad, I um, I think I think quite the opposite. Thank you. But anyway, I mean, I, I've been I've been burning to ask you this one specific question. You went through a critical career transition, like many people out in the world, not long ago mm -hmm. and we'll get into the context and the history and all of that later but just to kick the conversation off i wanted to just get straight to the point mm -hmm. many of us are struggling with career transitions many of us are struggling with pivoting and having to rapidly acquire new skills mm -hmm. learn new things which we never thought we did mm -hmm. the world is changing so quickly you did all of that very recently you did it at the highest level mm -hmm. and quite successfully i might add mm -hmm. but talk us a little bit through that transition that you went through uh, a year or two ago, what were some of the emotions that came up? What was probably the biggest challenge for yourself on a personal and professional level? Mm -hmm. And how did you navigate that mm -hmm. transition? Thanks, Maynard. This is my, I think, my third critical transition. Um, mm. So the previous one was 10 years ago. So I was full on in, in uh, church ministry. And then one day my wife and I sat and we had a conversation and I stood up and said, okay, we're going to make a change. And then, um, so that was, I started it. Um, and now 10 years later, almost <clears throat> similar season in, in our lives. Uh, so I was at a, a retreat center or a place of change center in, in the Western Cape. And we worked for the past six, seven years with uh, more than 10,000 leaders, um, from more than 100 countries, and we worked on deep change, um, personal, interpersonal, and then professional. Uh, but I, I think in, during COVID, I started to experience some restlessness. Um, and mm. then in, in Afrikaans, we say it's a krapperigheid. Uh, so I couldn't put my hand on it. Um, and then I realized that maybe it's time for me to shift. So how it normally works for me is that I will experience the restlessness 
And then I will start to, to do some research on what is out there or A, B, what do I have in my hand? Um, and I quickly realized mm. that I have some facilitation skills, coaching, some academic background. Um, and the, the big question for me was how can I package it in a way that people can say, I understand what you want to do. Um, but the emotions that I went through, even more intense than mm. the first time. So it's, it's anger. And then it's extreme mm. sadness. And, and, and I think what I experienced, it's an ego thing that's also happening. So who am I now? In a previous job, so you, have, you, you had a title. Uh, you had some privileges. Had, and now, from your own doing, you said, okay, but let's cut it. Um, and now suddenly, anger, sadness, some happiness here and there, sometimes even ambivalence. So... so, mm. so uh, Mad and sad at the same time, or glad and sad at the same time. Um, but yeah, so, so for me that was, and it's painful. Uh, let me be clear yes. about that. It's extremely painful. But two years later, it's, uh, my energy is back. It's a different type of energy. It's creative energy. Um, yeah, so, so for me that's, I made a decision it wasn't easy, but two years later, uh, the energy is back. Yeah. I think what we underestimate so oftentimes is the extent to which we attach our own identity to our skills and the value that we create as professionals in the world out there. And when that falls away, um, it leaves us with a gap. And we often have to allow ourselves to grieve um, loss of skills, yeah. loss of influence, loss of impact, yeah. loss of career, yeah, yeah. loss of authority, um, the way we would um, grieve any other loss. Yeah. But we're not always afforded that in the professional sphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I think the, the, the grieving part, uh, for me personally, it's, it's uh, not easy to be vulnerable, but uh, it, it took me to that place of vulnerability of, uh, listen, but who am I then? And it's now, I've been doing this more than once, but it's, who am I? Um, I and I think the, the, the deep realization of I'm more than a job. I'm more than a, um, than the relationships at the job. Um, uh, so, so for me, in my, in my own words, I realized that maybe I've started to build a very one-dimensional life. And actually measuring mm. my wealth and my well-being in only one dimension. So not going to work uh, anymore on a day-to-day -day basis afforded me the opportunity to explore other parts of your hunt. But, yes. but also, um, I think it's Richard Raw that's talking about dismantling the loyal soldier. Meaning, in my own words, in, in any transition, I had to let go of a certain part of my old self or, or a certain part that, that, mm. that has been helping me to, uh, to become who I am today, but it's no longer yeah. uh, suited for the next season of my life. Yeah. And, and that's for me, discernment, decision-making to say, well, all right, I'm okay. Let go of this part. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes 100% sense. Um, I can deeply identify with that, all of that, yeah. actually. Um, Johan, tell us a little bit. Let's, let's just zoom out for a bit and just give us um, a 30,000-foot blitz tour of your career up to this point. Um, start wherever you want and end wherever you want, but just give us um, how was the past, um, I guess, almost 20, 25 years as a professional person? What were some of the key milestones and journeys and capacities that you served in? So very high level in great... Four, I sat on my bed and sure. just got this, this presence and, and, the, and the sense of I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. I want to make a meaningful impact. Um, and then I went through the struggle of, okay, what should I study? Uh, grew up in a small town and there you had the doctor, the, the, the pastor and the headmaster. So limited options. I chose for, for the pastor option. Um, then second year of, of past studying uh, theology, I went for international um, uh, modeling. 
And there I realized, well, I can help people on a broader level. Even though spirituality for me is, is, is a center um, or is the essence, there are different ways of helping people. And then um, went into ministry, and then, but also started studying the, the industrial psychology to help people on a broader level. I love people. Um, mm. and, and then we can realize, but I'm bigger than a title. Or I have a broader, um, uh, what do you call it, interest than just a title. So I didn't want to stay in one lane. So then the industrial psychology, um, but also during that time started practical things. Facilitation, leadership development, and many times I didn't even know yes. what I was doing. Yes, but I had this desire. And when there was an opportunity, I was there. Um, and then uh, industrial psychology, and then said, but listen, actually, in the industrial psychology, big decision is it, do I go for industrial psychologist or is it leadership? And I realized leadership mm. uh, is my thing. And then um, went to a, a big church, and then suddenly realized I need to go corporate. Um, uh, full on corporate, and there I was a consultant. Uh, I, I jumped ship with a three month contract, and everyone was just, well, mm. What are you doing? But I, on a deep level, I knew, Go for it. Um, and then, mm. yeah, I started uh, lecturing at, at uh, university, business school. Um, and actually, the reason was I had to put food on the table, but I loved it. So, the, the, the yeah. high risk part. And then we started a family, and then suddenly I realized, but actually I need to be more uh, responsible now. Um, yeah, and then completed my doctorate in actually a facilitation of awareness in decision-making. So all thing about decision-making um, was very important to me. And then, uh, yeah, I shared something about the, the, the last six years of uh, working at that, that, uh, mm -hmm. that center. But I think by now, mm -hmm. the, the thing for me is that because I studied industrial psychology, we had one subject there, and, and they talked about the whole development of, of, of work. Um, and I realized at that stage that we know, it's not 300 years ago where your, fa your father is a, is a farmer and you're a farmer. Maybe sometimes that is. Mm. Or not even in industrialization where you, uh, they said, listen, but there are 50 jobs. We have 50 people. Let's put them into the 50 jobs if you can't if you can do it or not that doesn't matter and then later on the job matching where you say listen okay but i see maynard is a people person you want a task person and then there the, the challenge was in my case that okay if you become a pastor you will be a pastor for the rest of your life because we matched you you yes. went for all the tests but i realized that we're in a different season now, and that is you need to know who you are your identity and the assumption is there will, no, there will be no job that will fit you 100%. So I realized, sense. I said, listen, if I can have a 60% fit, great. But the other 40%, I need to experiment, try new things, um, maybe have some portfolio work or contract work, but it's my responsibility. And I think for me, I'm so, so grateful. Uh, I think that was Pro uh, Professor Kubis Maria. He did a lecture on mm. it, and for me, it was so helpful to, um, yeah. So I'm still yeah. passionate about what I'm doing, and I think that's one of the reasons. I didn't retire on a yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also, I mean, it's that passion that keeps fueling these yeah. transitions, however painful they may be, yeah. as the world changes yeah. from time to time, making that shift, yeah. that shift yeah, yeah. uh, keeps that passion alive. It also feels that. All right, so I'm, I'm super interested um, in your... What, what seems from a distance, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what seems like a very intuitive, natural style of learning, it seems as if it comes effortlessly for yourself. Like you, you um, whether in institutional, um, <clears throat> institutional platforms or just as a, um, as a self-taught professional um, learning what you need to know on a day-to-day -day basis. So it seems to me like both those things come... I'm, I'm good at being self-taught. I'm not so good at being an institutional mm. learner mm. as my professional qualifications will reflect. Mm. I mean, but tell us a little bit about the, the tension sometimes between those two. How has institutional learning mm. set you up for success and how has being self-taught and just fueling this daily passion 
um, where you said that you just said yes to opportunities when there was an invitation to facilitate or to consult in leadership. You were there, although you didn't necessarily have the professional qualifications at that time. But that attitude, leaning into those opportunities of lifelong learning, mm. and sometimes the tension between the, these two, what is the role that each fulfill for you? Mm. And how do you think about those two in your life no. now and in future? Mm. Yeah, I think it's a, a brilliant question, and I haven't thought about it a lot, so um, as I prepared for this, <laughs> I think that I'm very inquisitive. I'm curious. Uh, I mean, there are so many things that I don't know. Um, mm. So the challenge sometimes is that I go all, all over the place. So when I see something, I want to read it. I'm one of those people that wherever I go, I have pamphlets. <laughs> so when yeah, go, and, and, and everything is interesting. <laughs> yeah, everything is so, um, yes. uh, so, yeah, so, so that's a one side, and I, I won't get away from it. Um, but if you stand in front of people, and I think that's my thing, I want to, uh, when you give me your time, it's sacred to me. Um, and I want to give you mm -hmm. the best uh, possible thinking, the best possible um, skills. Uh, I want to present the best possible way. And in order to do that, I said, listen, but maybe I should uh, also study something so that I have the paper. So I'm not a paper person, but um, it helps mm -hmm. me with the rapport. So when I stand in front of people and I say, listen, I, I studied industrial psychology, immediately there's a, some sort of a trust. Okay, but at least he did, uh, he, he took the effort. To learn. Mm. So it's not a, a copy and paste thing that he's doing. Uh, because in my game, uh, it was church, corporate, and even in the leadership development space, it's very easy to take all my notes, work, copy and paste it, and then um, uh, offer it to people. And I think, with my calling, it is uh, I need to get other people's thinking, I need to struggle with the thinking, and then, and that's a practical part for me, and then I, I need to create my own stuff. So listen, but this is your Hans gift. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I had a, a conversation with my friends. He's now at Anglo-American, um, uh, De Beers. Um, and we had this mm. whole conversation, what's next? What's next? And, and you know what, Maynard? We in this whole career building thing, and I think it's great. Uh, and it's high risk because they can pull the plug at any time. I yes. wonder if we could start some thinking. And I think that this became clear to me but uh, last week when we had a conversation, if you can see that you have a gift, yeah? and mm -hmm. sometimes you can study something to strengthen that gift, yeah. but other times you need to restructure your life or redesign your life so that there's enough space for that gift to flourish. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and, and I think for me, that's so part of my gifting is I love people, I love leaders, I love high complexity. Um, I also love different viewpoints. And I think that's part of my, my um, study slash experimenting. So I, there are 20 leadership development theories, and I would know about them, not in depth, everyone, but then I would like to go mm. into the field and, and say, listen, test it. And when you talk, I can see it there, and then go back and... So it's not a, I study and mm. then I go, but it's the whole time. It's, um, so I think I'm an academic practitioner. Or a... I, like this <laughs> idea, I like this idea of having, your, um, having, having what you've learned institutionally yeah. or formally yeah, yeah. as a background, as yeah. a foundation, yeah, yeah. and then take what you are learning yes. um, on your day-to-day -day and um, kind of, how, how can I put it? That seasoning almost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you've learned institutionally with what you are experiencing in practice. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, Johan, you are, I mean, you are working with, um, with high performing people mm. in all different spheres, whether in the nonprofit space, corporate and business. Mm. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah, high performing um, athletes as well, yeah. which is super interesting. And I'd love to hear more about that. But across the board, when you work with people who are at the top of their game, mm. literally and figuratively, Talk to us a little bit. I mean, what are some of the trends that you're seeing that people are struggling with mm -hmm. when you're giving your all, when you're out there on the fields, when you're leaving it all out there? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that um, high, high performers often feel is their biggest struggle? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's holding them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are many things, but, but the one thing that I, I talk about a lot uh, recently is the dark side 
of success. So mm. many people romanticizing success. But when you get there, many of these high performers have a meaning crisis of, listen, I had this idea and I'm here now. Even better than I thought, but it's, I didn't get what I'm I, living the dream. Yeah, I'm living it, but, but I, I didn't get yeah. what I thought I gonna gonna get. Um, and then the, the the second thing is the because they are successful, people start lying to them. So, and what I say about lying is, um, actually, you, you sometimes you rude to people, but I don't tell you. We just uh, minimize mm. it because you, you you're a celebrity or you're a high performer or you're a so they, there's an illusion starting to, um, to form in their heads that they're almost untouchable. Um, mm. And then many times when they stop, uh, with the, or they go to a new job, or they, for whatever reason, they stop the, um, uh, the sport, then their whole life falls in, falls apart. Because they thought mm. they're living this life, but it's not. So there's no, and so also the foundation. So the whole life development, the whole um, being leadership development, uh, is also yeah, yeah. where some of the because I, sometimes life becomes one dimensional. Um, and, yeah, I can imagine if if you put so much effort into building that or into performing at that level, it can become all-consuming yeah. fairly quickly. Almost uh, an obsession. Uh, so that's what you eat, drink, mm. sleep. So it's, I understand it, but then the dark side of it is, or the other side of it is, is, is that part. And then I think my not the energy is a big thing. So to maintain, to replenish, to rejuvenate energy, mm. huge, huge, huge thing. Um, because I can, in, in my job, I can coach, uh, leadership coaching, with a very low uh, quality energy, and you won't yeah. you won't feel it the first time. But after three, four sessions, you will pick up. Yes, but this person is not bringing himself to the table, and the same mm. with them. So, so that's a huge thing for them to say. Listen, but how do you maintain and replenish and give high quality energy? Um, yeah. And then, when you talk energy, you talk identity. So, who am I? What can I do? What can't I? What's my limits? What's my... And then that's, for me, a fascinating conversation. Because many, many successful people, high performers, build a system that uh, is becoming a monster. So, and, and many of them would tell me, listen, I've built this thing, highly successful. And even I get the uh, applaud from people. Mm. But I want to get out. I want to stop it. I want to... Mm. So that's... Uh, yeah. So those are some of the things that I'm that I'm picking up. And then uh, I think part of my job is to take, to, to help them, to guide them, to reconnect with themselves, to reconnect with that deeper, I could say it's a calling or that deeper thing in them. Mm. That, listen, this is the, that's why I'm here, but also to help them to reconnect with the people around them. Um, and, and I think that's part of my, um, the, the role that I'm playing in order for, for them to flourish. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. yeah, to be even better yeah. than what they are now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so tell me, obviously, you can't um, spend hours and hours with people of this caliber, yourself included, and not have them rub off on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, fast, I, I'm super interested to know what are you learning yeah. from working with, um, with high-performing people across different sectors? Like on a personal level, what are some of the things that are rubbing off on you? Yeah, the, the, the one thing is mindset. May not uh, when you talk to some of these uh, people, it's just the way they view the world. Um, mm. It's uh, it's as if nothing is impossible. It's uh, so many things that yeah. the people will use as excuses. For them, it's less about but how will we get around it, through it? How will we? So it's it's that thing. So some mornings when I get up, like all of us, um, maybe not you, but. Uh, and you feel like, listen, but no. maybe, maybe not today. <laughs> then some of the voices come in my head. Okay, but let's try one more day. Let's, um, so I think that's a one thing. Yeah. I think the second thing that um, there are not many things that, that are issues to them. So they have a, um, their lives are not cluttered. Mm. Uh, so for me, that's a, a, a 
huge thing. To, because sometimes, even myself, we, we clutter our lives with nonsense things, thoughts. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so I think two weeks ago I had to do a, a podcast. Um, and one of the things that I said based on the learning from them is, listen, if something is bothering you in your house, give it away. If there's a yes. TV that's in your, in your, give it away. It doesn't matter what it costs. You just give it away. In, and I think that's what I've learned from them is, so be careful with your wife, your husband. Don't give them away. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so for me, that's uh, two things. Uh, uncluttered lives and then the mindset that uh, is, is different. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So, I mean, as you as you journey through this world of high performance, of um, managing energy, leadership, mm. all those things, I mean, you you I assume you have a unique perspective on what is happening in the world of work out there, mm. what is happening in the world of leadership. So, in your opinion, I mean, our world is changing yes. at the speed of light. Yeah. The world is not the same. Offices are not the same. Yeah. Workers are not the same. Things like work from home and hybrid mm. lifestyles and all these things are now um, household type um, property. But tell me, in your opinion, what is the most important skill? Once again, across different sectors and industries, skill that people have now that you think is the most important thing to learn, focus on, to make a success in the world out there? Again, uh, I think it's a wonderful question. So for me, there's a, a big hype around, uh, is it now the big resignation or the, the big reset or the big... Mm. Yeah, and there, there are some big shifts. Um, but, but for me, most of it lies on a practical level. I mean, do I work from home? Do I work from... I mean, for me, it's a practical thing. People are people. And people will stay mm. people. So for me, I, I go back to the anthropological needs in all of us. So it doesn't matter where you are, how old you are, what your rank in the organization... You have a need, most probably, for, for, to be connected to something be, uh, bigger. Uh, it could be a person, it could be a cause. You have a deep, deep need to feel that you have value. You have a deep need to add value to other people's lives, or to, to we call it sometimes both relationship. And then you have a deep need mm. to, to make an impact, to see that actually I'm doing uh, I make some difference here. Um, and then for me, it, it, the question is in a right. So if, if I said to these people, then, and I'm one of them, now I need to discern, given this season of my life, what is the most important now? Uh, so for some of us, it is, you know what, I really want to, I'm now at a stage in my career, but I want to make a huge impact. And in order to do that, I need to be around people in the office. So I will go back to the office and I need to spend time. So then for me, it's simple leadership things. Um, for some of us, it's, listen, mm. I need to, um, to connect with myself again. So actually, it's time for me now to go slow, to actually work more on my own, to go and negotiate. Can I have some more flexi time? Um, so, so I think mm. for me, um, the discernment and then the decision making and, and rather make um, choices that that's, say, listen, it's a sprint. So for the next month or the next three months. So, I think we're beyond the point of uh, pre-COVID where we say, listen, for the next five years, or for the next four years, or for the next... Yeah, I know, that, that, so, that kites has flown. Yes, yeah, so, so rather <laughs> say, listen, but yeah, for the next five, six months. Um, and I think that will help mm. even uh, people that's used to an old corporate idea. Because let me, let's be honest, and I've worked with corporate, many of us retired on the job. We became numb. We became actually very comfortable. We became... And maybe this mm. is just a wake up call. And uh, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, that's the, yeah. All right. So that, yeah, that makes 100% sense. I mean, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing, and this is, this is not, I want to say older people, but it isn't an age thing. I see a lot of young, young people, people in their 20s, um, people in their 30s, all the way across the professional um, spectrum of people that feel comfortable in a predictable, yeah. um, constant world who has been so shook right. by all the changes and not only the fact that things are changing, but also the speed at which yeah, things yeah. are changing. Yeah. And so for me, that what exactly what you're saying, that adaptability, 
that um, manner of discernment, being able to make decisions that are based not on a rule, but on a value. Mm -hmm. And that decision, although it's based on the same value, might look different tomorrow and next week, yeah, yeah. although the value or the consideration stays constant. That yeah, yeah. is a massive skill yeah, yeah. that will help us to work sustainably, stay productive. I love that. Yeah. All right. So I've, I have a couple, one or two more questions for you. So. As you know, we love talking about learning, about making sure that we, um, that we skill up and we acquire skills. It's not just about knowledge transfer. Mm. It's about actually doing better at work. Mm. That's the point. So often we mistake learning for information, whereas learning is actually acquiring the ability to do things that you couldn't have done before. So I work with a lot of people. I meet people who are 100% confident then that what they have studied at varsity or wherever else, if they had the privilege and the opportunity to do so, will sustain them mm. through a 30, 40 year career. Mm. If they did a three year degree um, 10 or 20 years ago, that that will <laughs> secure their life, health and well being. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to people? What's your advice to people that are in that mindset? No, no. So, so for me, yeah. In Afrikaans, by start the fella, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, while you are studying, you're already studying old knowledge uh, or information. Yes. So that's the. Uh, I think that the thing about study for me, my is it it, uh, it helps you to develop a way of thinking. And I think for me, that is the most. Actually, for, to me, it doesn't matter what you study. If you study something, it, it gives you a way of thinking, and. Um, so, so going forward, uh, I think an attitude of um, what's next. So I studied this. So see it as, as a house that you're building. Um, mm. And when you, so see you're building, maybe at this stage of your, your, your career, you're building just the, um, the dining room because that's your life. That's you. But then see, okay, but if I want to stay in this house till I'm 80, maybe I should have a look at the garage as well. Um, and what I'm meaning by that is, so for me, in, my, in my world, for instance, now, I'm already thinking, what, do I, what should I study next? I had been through a season where I said, I can't study another degree. I'm now there. I want to study another degree. But I then changed gears and said, listen, what's helping me? Maybe executive education. So I started mm. executive education. There's many free online courses. There's many. But, but for me, stay in touch with your reality now. And don't study something to become someone. You're already becoming someone. Study. Exactly. So rather say, listen, this is where I'm at. This is what I experienced. And you know what? I want to offer something better. I want to serve better. And then discern what's the next thing that I need to... Um, yes. And not even study. Maybe just open myself to. It could be a course, but it could yeah. also be an experience. Um, and yeah, so, so for me, those are the... That, that would be my... My advice, and, and I think yeah. if you could be um, an underlying, um, what is fine script? The, 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 uh, yeah, if there is, can be some supporting information or something that, um, that supports that. Yeah, so the threat for me would be at the end of my life, how can I acquire wisdom? Mm. And I yes. think you acquire wisdom when you're in touch with your reality. Uh, when you're in touch with that bigger cause or, or that person that you're connected to, but also uh, equipping yourself and learning from other people. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I love, I love that idea. I love that idea of transitioning from being qualified to being wise. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. The story that you've probably heard as well, the difference is between having that information or that knowledge that a tomato is actually a fruit, but also having the experience to know that you don't necessarily put a tomato in a fruit salad yeah, yeah. and like the it, yeah. difference is the wisdom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. So, I mean, to follow up on that question, and I think this will be probably my last question for you, but there's also the person, there's also the young professional who didn't have the opportunity to go to varsity, yeah, who yeah, didn't yeah. study a three year degree, yeah, yeah. who are entering the job market completely, um, unqualified to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we, what, I, and I don't want to um, answer this on your behalf, yeah. but we are seeing a world where skills development yeah. is actually leading the way people are hiring for skills more and more and more than they are hiring for formal education. Yeah. But tell me a little bit, what would you say to that person? If that person is 20, 30 years old, yeah. the world of work is changing. Yeah. They don't have a paper, as you said, yeah. to their name. Yeah, yeah. 
but they do have access to a world of skills development. What would be your advice to that person? Don't focus on what you don't have. What is in your hand? I mean, you, you grew up in a family. You have certain experiences that I didn't have. So there's, for me, some hmm. jewels and gold in, in, in that. Um, secondly, what do you like doing? Um, are there things that you are naturally good with? Um, and then, um, to be frank, I don't think anyone will get away from learning something new or from some education. So, hmm. so instead of saying, I don't study because a, a, a master's degree in leadership will tell me nothing, will teach me nothing new, Rather say, listen, what, what is my way of learning? Am I a visual learner? Am I someone that needs to be practical? Or should I do I have a learning sprints rather than a four or five year degree? Mm. So, so, so please don't, um, you will have to study or learn something new. Um, and, yes. uh, and then I think the, the other thing for me is um, there are many People is extremely successful without uh, any education, but I think people are um, actually telling their stories in such a way that you don't realize it's actually either supernatural or it's it's uh, the exception on the rule. Um, yes. So so that's why I say start with who you are, and then worst case scenario. Uh, do some entrepreneurship. Um, I mean, there are, you know what? what yeah, build something. Build something. Learn from building something. Yeah, there are, yes. there are needs in your um, in your environment. Be open, uh, but but continue with that um, thing of I want to serve. I want to make it better. And I think mm. in doing that, there will always be some sort of of need that you can satisfy, and and, and that people will be will say, listen, I'm willing to pay for it. Um, so yeah, mm. so, so that would be my yeah. my advice. Um, Johan, tell me, uh, my, my very last question to you before we sign off is very shortly. I mean, um, I am super interested to know, on a, and whether this is professional, maybe it's personal, but what is the one thing that, that you are learning right now that is completely new to you? Mm. Uh, I almost can't think or imagine that there are some things that you haven't read about or known mm. about already. But if they are, I mean, share it with us. What yeah. is the one thing that you are learning in your life right now? We are in your career. Yeah. And in your life as a husband, father, colleague, um, coach, mm. um, mentor, that, that you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my goodness, this is completely new. I am learning this um, almost from nothing. It, is there still some things like that for you? Yeah, I think to be, to be honest, um, for me, it is clear that uh, with social media, um, the substance that you bring to the table is not the fi- doesn't have the final say. <laughs> there are mm. many people on social media, and in saying that, I'm also careful that I uh, self-reflected as well. That give an image there of a life or of some knowledge they have, or but it's it's not re- it's not real in a sense that. Um, when you meet them face to face, it's different. Um, yes. Or when you get in contact with that yes. online course, you say, "But listen, but what you've said there and what you said here is not—it's not matching." So for me, what I'm mm. learning, we are living in two dimensions. There's a social online dimension, and then there's a um, a real life dimension. And for me, both are real, but it's different. Uh, and for me, I think. One of the big questions myself every day is, but how can I, what, who I'm here and who I'm online, how can I ensure that it's the same? So one thing, when someone uh, created my website, I asked him, please, 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 under promise on my website. Yes. In order for yes. me to over deliver when I'm with someone. And I think yeah, in me, person, in person, so yeah. for me, that's one of the things that I'm learning and I'm sometimes struggling. Um, because sometimes you, you watch social media and you say, I'm, I'm behind, I'm, yes. and then and we all have it. But um, and yeah, so, so I think that's one thing um, that I'm learning on a day-to-day basis. 
Yeah, yeah. That, makes, uh, that makes 100% sense. I can completely identify with that. We are living in, and maybe in future in three or four dimensions. Yeah. Johan, it's been such a privilege to have you on the show. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Um, uh, where can people make contact um, uh, with you? I'll share all your links and everything in the description to the video so people will be able to click on that. Yes. But, um, but if there's anything, um, anything else that you think uh, people might get into contact with you, what, where, would, where would that be? How can people get a hold of you? I think LinkedIn would be, would be the best for me. Um, so there they can mm. see what I'm doing, what I'm busy with. And then also, yeah, anytime, um, contact me. It would be lovely to connect with the people. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maynard.